So here we are uh, starting up again, right? So the next thing we're going to start to think about is how we drive uh, the control of this network, right? And uh, specifically, the way that we really need to think about this is how we're going to add a control panel to this. So I'm going to add another container here to the mix. Uh, for one hot second, I'm going to bounce out here and I'm going to look at this uh, container for just one second and think for one minute about how I want this to kind of work and show up. Right? Do I want a container that goes all the way from top to bottom or how, how do I want to compose this? I think for right now, what I'm going to start with is I'm going to go ahead and give the, our container here, mm, I think I want to go ahead and give it a width of 150. And I'm going to leave the height at 300 for right now. That seems like it's pretty okay for me. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dive inside of this. And uh, now we're going to start to build uh, our actual sliders and controls here. Now, I happen to know that uh, the easiest way to, to solve some of these problems, right, is to work with clones. And to work well with clones, uh, I really want to think about having a table. And I'm going to go ahead and add a null to the end of this. Right, in case for whatever reason, if I need to change this, I'm going to call, th call this for clones. And I know there are a couple things that I need to know about this particular slider. First off, um, I know, and again, I'm going to use a text editor to make this go a little bit faster. I know that I'm going to need uh, a name for my variables. I'm going to need a scale minimum. I'm going to need a scale max. I know that I'm going to have a display name. That I'm going to want to add here. We'll go ahead and save that. And I happen to know uh, that I want, well, in this case, for this particular example, I'm only going to do, uh, let's do five. We could add more if we wanted to, right? So tab one, two, three, four, five. Let's save that. And it went ahead and added those in for me. Excellent. Now I am going to guess here that um, some of the things that I might want here in, oh, come back, come back. Um, well, let's go ahead and close this and we'll edit it over here as we go. I know that I'm going to want uh, to drive my noise. I already know some of these things, so I'm just going to go ahead and fill these in with some of the variables I already know that I want to deal with. X rotation, Y rotation, uh, Z rotation, I want my feedback scale. I want, oh, I'm going to need more. Oh, okay, we're going to need more sliders. It's, it's just how it's going to go. So let's uh, add after, add after. Because in uh, I want my feedback scale, I want my feedback rotation. Mm, what else? I want... Yeah, I want my torus noise, and let's insert another add after. I want my torus segments. Yeah, okay, well, we'll deal with these for right now. This is plenty. It's going to give us a headache. All right, we can go ahead and give these some proper names. X rotation, Y rotation, Z rotation, feedback, scale, and we can always change these later, which is why we're putting them in a table. We'll see that uh, in a little bit here. Feedback, rotation, rotation, torus noise, torus segments. All right, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to assume that 0 to 1 is uh, how I'm going to want to start. Yep, and that's going to be good enough. In fact, let's we could just do uh, 0 to 1 for all of these. And then as we come back through, we'll see that we can drive them here from this table rather than having to do a whole lot of extra work. All right. So we've built the kind of preliminary table that we're going to use to kind of uh, construct all of our sliders. So let's go ahead and add a slider. And I'm going to go ahead and make some changes to the slider because 
Why not? It's my slider. I'll do what I want. I'm going to call this <laughs> template <laughs> template one. I want it to have a digit because I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I can get to digits. I'm going to. Uh, I know out the gate that I'm going to want it to look for something called BG as a background. I change the width of, of my parent to be 150. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to be 150, and I know I want it to be 30. Mm, we can change that later. Um, great. So let's go ahead and make some magic happen here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go inside of my slider. I'm going to split the view for a hot second and back out here um, because I know that uh, I'm probably going to want to be able to grab something in particular. Um, let's shrink this a little bit. So one way that I could think about doing this, right, is I could think about making sure that I pull out, I select variables uh, based on this table. And we could do this a number of different ways. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and use a select. And I'm going to use a select partially because I know uh, that something's coming later where I'm going to want to have this, but I wouldn't have to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in my four clones, uh, dat, and in this case, I'm going to extract a specific uh, column index, and I'm going to use me.digits to be able to grab the one that I want. So me.digits and me.digits is the beginning and end, right? And I want to make a couple changes to this slider. So if I look at the slider over here, I can see that when we go to the end, I fall off the end of my container. I fall off the top of my container. I'm also all the way top to bottom. There are a couple things about this particular slider that I would like to change, just because I want them to have have it. I want it to have a slightly different uh, feeling to it. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the height of it, and I'm going to subtract two pixels from it. I'm going to make it two shorter. I'm going to back out here for one second. I'm going to set the vertical justify to be center. So I'm going to stick this right in the middle. I've got a little border here on the top and the bottom. Next, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to middle mouse click to fork and I'm going to add a math and a null and I'm going to call this slider slider POS for slider position. and. What I have here right now is I've got this excellent expression that's looking at my parents panel U value and I'm multiplying that by my width and I'm subtracting uh, half of my panel width, right? That's how I'm doing the math to figure out the position of where this guy should live, which is excellent. That is a very fancy way to do that. Um, I'm going to do it a slightly different way. I'm going to use my math here to redefine the range. I want the range to go from one, right? I don't want to go all the way to the edge here. The bottom of this should be one pixel away from the edge. And I would like to go all the way up to one pixel away from this other edge, right? And so um, to know some of those things, I need to know me.parent, parent, par, uh, width. I need to know my parent's width, right? That's 150. Excellent. I need to subtract from that the operator called knob, and I need to know knob's width, and I'm going to add one to that, right? Because I want this, my farthest value, to be one less than the edge of this. Uh, last but not least, in knob, I'm going to go ahead and instead of using this big long formula, I'm just instead going to look for the operator yoza called slider pos and I'm going to look for the channel called v1. There we go and now I should have a slider that's one pixel from the edge and one pixel from the edge and I am pleased as punch with that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a text dat or excuse me a text top I'm going to go ahead and define its size again by its parent me.parent par width and height. Me parnet parent always helps if you can spell. 
I'm going to go to the text page. I'm going to get rid of this default text that comes in here. I'm going to use the select as the dat that I want to look at. And in this case, I want to look at column 3. Excuse me, column 0, row 3. Column 0, row 3. Bada bing, bada boom. And last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and turn the font size down to mm, maybe 11. Maybe 12. Okay, 12 feels pretty good. I'm going to change this, name, this guy's name to BG. And because we've already told this particular uh, container that it's panel, right? Its panel is this thing slash BG. It's looking at slash B. It's looking inside of itself dot slash for the thing called BG. Okay, we're almost there. We're going to go ahead and make a little more space in here uh, because we're going to add a few more operations to the mix. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert a rename because I want to be able to rename the thing that's coming out of this. And I'm going to insert a math because I'm going to want to rescale the values that are coming out of this. We're going to assume that the data set we're going to work with later, and I am kind of know where we're going, right, which is why I'm cheating a little bit, why I know that I want to, want to build this a particular way. I'm going to assume that my uh, the values in my data set are already normalized, and so I need the math to help me kind of uh, change those normalized values, 0 to 1, which is why we're playing with sliders, to be able to think about how my data set works. So we'll get there. So rename, I want to rename this variable, and I want to be able to call it seed, right? It's var name. So in this case, I want the operator that's going to be called select1, and out of select1, I would like the row 0, and the column 0. And I need to use this expression, tri-state button. Now I've gone ahead and changed the name of the variable, perfect. And then finally for my math, I need to be able to also specify that I want the operator noise 1. And out of this, my min is the first one, and that's going to be in row 1, column 0, and my max copy paste is going to be in two, one, and we have got an error, which is outstanding. All right, what error do we have? Oh, of course, silly me. It's select one, not noise one. I don't, I don't know where my brain is. Select one. Select one. Perfect. All right, so now we've gone ahead and we've set up uh, the kind of prototype for how we'd like this particular container to work, this particular slider to work. Let's go ahead while we're at it, and in the common page, we're going to make this thing a clone of itself. Excellent. Let's make a copy, and we'll call this S1 for slider 1, and we'll stick this guy over here, and this is what we'll start making copies from. So slider 1, copy 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You would guess that we could have used a replicator for this very process, and uh, I didn't. That's, that is okay. Oh, and let's, we can see here that these all have the same name. All right, what did we do? We did something funny uh, to make these not behave quite right. Let's debug this real fast. Let's look in S2. Aha! Me dot digits. Oh, of course! Oh, that's very excellent. I'm so glad that's there. So we can see here, right, that when I look at this, uh, I wrote this particular script, and let's look uh, simultaneously inside the master, right? I'm looking at the template, and we'll look here inside of one of our clones. And let's look at a clone with a different digit. I asked in my select for my digits, me dot digits, which happens for this, in this case, to be one, right? Select one, its digits are one. And what I really want is me dot parent. I want my parent's digits. Excellent, dot dot. Me dot parent dot digits, me dot parent dot digits. Excellent, and now we should see Aha, seed rotation, da 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 Perfect. I love it when things go wrong. Okay. Uh, next up here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in a merge. We're going to put all these channels here together. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm going to add a null to the end of this because I love having a null. 
at the end of my chain, and I'm going to call this null uh, control. Now, I also happen to know that I want to make a few other changes here in a little bit, so I'm going to add a panel, because I know that I'm going to want a panel, and out of the panel, I happen to know that I'm going to want the inside, inside, I'm going to want to lag that, and then last but not least, I'm going to want to attach that to a null. And in fact, you know what, let's do this instead. Let's actually just connect this down here to our merge. We can put it right there. Uh, and this is called inside. And when we select this, why don't we just go ahead and give this a better name. We'll call this panel O. because that's going to be our panel opacity. All right, oops, we've got an error here. All right. We're going to come here to our container. Let's go ahead and set our line to be top to bottom. Excellent. Ooh. Oh, that's how very lovely. That's pretty close. Um, so we should be able to just subtract the height of one of these guys, I think. Right? So we've got eight of these all together. Let's look. There are eight at a height of 30. So we could just write the height as an expression. I want 8 times 30. And now we have a container that is exactly the height of the things inside of it. Mm, you can see feedback rotation is not quite right. We might need to... Okay. In our master, we might need to think about turning this font maybe down to 10 after all. Let's see if that does a trick. Yeah, much better. Okay. All right. Now, so a lovely trick that we can use to make it easy to kind of grab the values that we want is we can dive inside of here. In our control, let's go ahead and view this. This gives us a little pop-up window. And this pop-up window is just going to stay with us here as we back out here and start to create all the relationships for our expressions. Okay, without further ado, let's dive in. So the first thing here is seed. Now I happen to know that I want that to drive the seed of my noise, so I'm going to go ahead and grab seed and drop it over here on seed and make a relative reference out of that. I happen to know that I want the x, y, and z rotations to drive my geometry, so x, y, and z. I also know that I've got a feedback scale in all of this. Um, and I'm guessing, right, like if I think about what that means, it really means that I want that to drive the scale here of my feedback. So my feedback scale is going to go relative here and relative here. Feedback rotation, I know that's going to go right over here as a relative reference. Now, I happen to have the advantage of already having built this, so you get to watch me just kind of put it together rather than figure out the, figuring out those relationships. And that's actually a much more interesting thing to do is to kind of figure out what those relationships mean to you and how you represent them. Um, so I would encourage you to take time with that when you do it yourself. If you're following along, I'm just doing it this way because I already know what it is that I'm up to. All right, so for my torus noise, I'm going to use my torus noise to animate uh, the Z relative reference here of what's going on in my noise. And then my segments, I'm for my torus segments, I think that what I want to do here is I'm going to use torus segments to drive rows relative and then torus segments to drive columns. Uh, in this case, I'm going to multiply this value by 0.75. Excellent. And I might put a zero in there just so that it's easier for me to see the choice I made. All right, now I've assigned all of my parameters. Now we can see that this is uh, very different, right, than, than what I had before. And a part of what's going on here, let's go ahead and display this in the background, is that our challenge is based out of the fact um, that we're, we have normalized values. So we're not getting the range of motion that we might want, Ooh, although that is very fun, um, right? I'm only getting 0 to 1, and while that's 
uh, all well and good. It's not really the thing that I'm after. Now, I happen to have already done uh, my finagling. Right, so I know the values that I'm going to want to stick in here. But what you might think about doing is you start to, to explore how you want to think about uh, these things and their scaled relationship is that we would go ahead and dive here inside a container. We could view this lovely table that we've made. Now we've built all of our relationships already, so that can go away. But let's come out here and let's, for example, look at we're actually going to go ahead and view this as a floating window so we can still drive our parameters. And I don't need that window up. All right, so I might think about uh, rotation, right? That could be a great place for me to think about what I want rotation to be. So what are the min and max of my X rotation? What are they going to kind of represent to me? So I might start right here. So the minimum might be 0 and the maximum might be 360. So I could go ahead and dump those numbers in. Right, um, the not work extra. Oops, zero is a min. I need a minimum value and a maximum value. That helps, right? Okay, so now I've got zero to three sixty. That's uh, that's interesting, but maybe it would be more interesting if I went like negative one eighty to one eighty. Right, this gives me a different kind of relationship with this slider. Right, it means that the zero position is different now. Right, it's it's kind of rearranging how I think where this slider lives. So now you get to start to make some more arbitrary kinds of choices in terms of, well, arbitrary in one sense, but also very creative in, in another sense about how you're going to organize this. I happen to know because I've played this game already, that I want to go ahead and dump in a couple numbers already. So if you're just following along at home, uh, I'm going to do negative 180 and 180. I think that's right. I'm going to use the same values for y, negative 180, oops, negative 180 and 180. Z rotation is going to be set to 80 and 180. That's going to be offset just slightly. I know that my feedback scale, right? My feedback scale is going to go from a range of 0 0.2 all the way up to about uh, 0 0.94, not 10.94, 0 0.94. Excellent. I want my rotation to go, um, well, let's say that I want it to go from negative, I'm changing this up a little bit, 45 to 270. Excellent. I would like my torus noise to go from 0 to 100. I would like my torus segments to be in the range of 10 to 44. Excellent. And now, now I'm getting somewhere. See so rotation feedback scale. We can turn that down a little bit. Uh, Right now, now we are cooking with gas kids. This is fun. Okay, so you'll also notice, right, that as uh, what we've kind of come up with in this particular instance is that we're dealing entirely with kind of like made art. I'm not worried so much about uh, how this is going to perform in terms of um, being animated in real time. I'm just thinking about how I make one single still image. If we wanted to think about how we were going to animate this, that's a whole other kind of uh, place that we might get going. This particular example is only dealing with uh, how we kind of get started out the gate here. Okay, so now we've built a control panel that drives all of these elements. If we back out here, we can see there we've got it. Uh, um, we're almost there. One thing I'm not totally sold on is the fact that this thing stays up all the time. So let's go ahead and take advantage of the fact that we've got this panel and this lag. Let's view our panel here. And what I would like to do is uh, write one more simple expression. So in the panel value in opacity, we're going to look for the operator that is inside called control CTRL. And I want the channel called, I believe we called it panel O. Right? 
Excellent. So now we get this roll on, roll off. I'm going to drop down a trail. Sometimes it's hap It's easier with uh, our lag to kind of look that look at this as a trail, so we can kind of get a sense of what this is doing. So we can see here that I've got this uh, ease in. We got a sharp fall off, fall off, boom, you know, and then we kind of gently fall out of that. So I'm going to change these things a little bit. I like the steep attack here. But I want a slower roll off. So we've got a steep attack, and ooh, it gently gives itself, gets itself all the way out. Chunk, shoom. Excellent. All right. So with that in mind now, I don't need this trail. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll back out. And at this point, we should have. All right. We've got something that's looking pretty good. If we view this, we've got our container here, and we are, we're cooking. We're doing some pretty decent work. All right, and we're still rolling around like 58, 57 frames per second. And part of that is because I've got another copy of Touch Designer open and running. So we're doing just fine. All right, so now that we've built this thing, how on earth do we think about working with a table of data to automatically create a bunch of these based on numbers that already exist? All right, that's going to be our next chapter. Hang on tight. We are going to fall deeper down the rabbit hole.